Um, you know, Kodak did research a number of years ago and they found out that something like in the 90s, something like 90% of all the photography in the world of people are purchased by women. Now really? think about how important that is. What does that mean? 90%. Yeah, I'm not kidding you. It's huge. It's, I mean, it's just absolutely astronomical. And so what does that tell me? Well, it tells me that there's something, there's a reason that women buy photography. We're the keepers of history. Women are the keepers of history when it comes to photographing your children. Um, women are the ones who collect all the photographs of their kids and, and pass them down from the generations and so forth. And, they're, and, and they are the ones that, that take their children to the photographer in many times. And, and, and nowadays, you know, 25 years ago when I started in photography, there were very few women photographers because it was more of a career path for men, because it was about sure. equipment. It yeah. was like, ooh, you know, f-stops and shutter speeds and cameras, and it was very nuts and boltish. You know, in fact, there was a lot of um, what are they called engineers yeah. that 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 are into photography because of all the mechanical aspects. And yet nowadays, I think there are more and more women that are becoming photographers because they 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 are very interested in people because women are very social. So on that point, how did you come to be a top wedding and portrait photographer? Um, you know, it's really funny because when I started in photography 25 years ago, first of all, I've known since I was a little kid that I wanted to be a photographer. Really? I got my first camera when I was 14 years old and I was photographing my brother out in the front yard. Um, I've always loved pictures. When I was five years old, my parents, if they wanted to keep me out of trouble, if they gave me a photo album and let me look at pictures, I could be content for hours. But there were always pictures of people. Well, um, I got married in 1975, and um, the person that photographed my wedding was a friend who had a good camera. You see, I failed to recognize the most important thing, and that is that cameras do not take pictures. People do. And that is so important because I said, oh, you know, in fact, one of the stupidest questions on that checklist that you're supposed to ask your photographer, you know, what kind of camera do you have? As though it makes a difference in the world. It, that's the <laughs> stupidest thing in the world. In fact, when a bride asks me that question, I always bring out that little stupid que that camera that has the word wedding written on the side. <laughs> and I go, hey, look at that baby. Isn't she beautiful? And, and they kind of look at me like I'm from Mars. But, but at the end of the day, I kind of laugh with them because cameras don't take pictures. You know, it's the person behind the camera that does. And yes, I think you need to know an f-stop from a bus stop, but you really do need to go far beyond that and have an interest in people, especially if you're going to photograph weddings and such. The job of the photographer, whether you're a photojournalist and you're letting events unfold, or whether you're a portrait photographer and you're more in charge of setup, you still both of those scenarios. You still have the same job of creating a framework in which the person is allowed to be. And, you know, the photographer's personality is always in there too, but it's the aspect of the, their personality that resonates with the subject's personality. In other words, you'll see the emotions and expressions in the person that you're photographing that you can connect with that resonate with you. And how do you do that? You know, I think the way you do that is by really being interested mm -hmm. and being curious and being completely tuned in. I think of it as like a, the way a dog looks at a tennis ball. <laughs> you know what I mean? There's a complete focus that the second that thing moves, they're on it. Right. You know, they know exactly where the ball is, not where they think it's going to be, but they're so clued into it. And that's, I think that's what you have to do as a photography is be that tuned into what you're looking at. Be sure to subscribe to our blog now to stay updated on my show, and we'll give you tips and insight to keep advancing your photography. Also, check out our guests' website for a closer look at their work. Tune in to our next episode of Advancing Your Photography for an inside look at another photographer's world. Until then, this is Mark Silber reminding you to get out and capture your own images of life.